Johnny was my hero. Uh, he uh, he had integrity. He he never took money from the government. Uh, God knows he needed it, you know. But he never he was proud, and he would not like me talking like this because he was he wanted to be known for his art. I did tell a story about uh, he was sleeping all day and up all night, and so we said, you know, look, you've got to, you've, every time you painted, you've sold it. And I said, just start painting. And then I said, you know, if you're not going to paint, then mow, mow the lawn. And so, sure enough, I came home from work at 5.30 night, and he was out in the front yard with the lawnmower between his teeth, and in his wheelchair and dragging it behind and mowing my lawn, uh, which I immediately went down 20 notches in the neighborhood. And he, uh, uh, but he just, you know, by God, I'll show you what I can do. And he would do it. He showed us all how to live. And uh, with integrity and humor, and uh, I was proud to have known him. One thing that I would like for everyone to know about Uncle Johnny is, is he was just he, he just had a great sense of humor. He could make anything that happened to him that was horrible, you'd be laughing at the end of the, uh, the story when he told you. That has been a, uh, a piece that's been in his studio where he was, wherever he was, wherever his studio was, for, for since he was about 15 or so, I believe. He drew that, that's a pen and ink. He drew that as a doodle, and, uh, uh, but it was important to him and he kept it for all these years, uh, framed in his, uh, in his studio. And I always admired it because I, I love pen and inks and this is one of his very early, uh, er, very early works. Uh, and it was always very visible to me when I was in his studio. And so uh, he noticed that and uh, not that long ago, he gave that uh, to to us, to my wife and I, and uh, uh, and so it's very important to me because he he specially gave it to me, he wanted me to have it, uh, and uh, it's uh, and one reason why he wanted me to have it was because it's about the story of Daniel Webster. You know, he he started out painting oils um, and. Um, uh, and he and he developed a a, a style that uh, for him he only used one type of paint and uh, because it it would mix with the other paints the way he wanted to and so he was a great oil painter and in his early work he painted nature and so uh, and it was a realist style because if you looked at it it was a tree you know and and the grass was a grass and uh, it was very real and it was a realism that he had in his early work. And, uh, and those are paintings that are great to look at. But as he progressed, he changed mediums and he changed style. He's well known for his uh, avenue paintings, Garrison Avenue paintings and building paintings, church paintings. And these paintings, uh, people will tell you, are about buildings, but I never felt that way. I don't think they're about buildings. I think they're about community. And so like this painting behind me, the parade, um, it, if you took the painting and divided it into uh, quarters, you know, put made a cross down it and divided it into quarters, you could, you, you could see detail which stands by itself. For example, you could just take this square down here um, of, of this man smoking a pipe and the, the people are looking off in the distance as the parade comes, usually a rodeo parade coming down the, the avenue. Uh, Uncle Johnny painted from the uh, turn of the century, the, uh, the, the change between the 1800s and the 1900s. So you have horses and you have cars. And you have uh, 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 buildings that really existed at that time. These are, the, he always researched the buildings and the signage. And so this was, this was an avenue that appeared at that time. You can see buildings that are no longer there, but people recognize them, especially older uh, Fort Smithians. There's the church at the end of the avenue. And, uh, but if, again, if you took any corner of this painting 
it would be by, it'd be one by itself. Uh, over here on the on the right with the with the uh, uh, mailbox, there's a, a boy playing, and there's uh, and this man I keep talking about, the shopkeeper with the pipe. I'm interested in him because what is he? Is he a shopkeeper? I'm thinking he's a shopkeeper, and he's come out of his store and he's watching the parade come down. So this again, although these are these are buildings, this is really about community, about interactions. His buildings always had. Uh, parishioners going into the church and out of the church, or he had a school and he had students being dropped off and carrying their books. You know, the activity around the building always matched the, the purpose of the, brought purpose to the building, which wouldn't be there if it was just all by itself. I know that he would like to be remembered as a great artist, and, uh, and I believe that, and that's because he is, he was. And so I think his art is, is just great. But he was also a great man, you know. Um, he um, he uh, would have been great in any, uh, anything that he set his mind to. He's well known for having a disability, for having been born uh, with a, basically out the, with a, out the use of his legs and uh, with uh, problems with his right extremity and his hands. And, and so it was, uh, that's what, um, uh, many people remember him by, but he would want to be remembered by his art. When the baby was born, the doctor told his mother, um, I don't expect that he will live more than a couple of weeks. So she made an appointment at a photo, photo shop and went down and had a picture made of him. People would call Johnny a paraplegic, but a paraplegic is a person who has had his spinal cord broken at some point and anything below wherever that break occurred, that person would be paralyzed. And Johnny was by no means paralyzed. He had cerebral palsy, which was due to injuries to the motor section of the brain and that's why he could not walk and why his hands were deformed and things like that. Uh, but the first time we met I was living at Barling and my brother and I had polio and I was away for convalescence for maybe two years and when I came back to Barling uh, I went to Barling School, but it wasn't easy getting around. And uh, Mama put me in a school for the disabled here in Fort Smith. And Johnny was a student there already. I was 10 and he was uh, 15. And my brother Charles, he was working at the cafe that my mom, our mom was running on uh, Zero Street. and. Uh, Lo and behold, Johnny came in uh, the next night or a few days later, if not, and uh, he recognized Johnny. And he got a picture out of his wallet and showed it to Johnny and said, do you know this girl? And Johnny said, oh, yes, I, do. I know her. Where are y'all living now? And uh, he, he uh, got my brother to show him where we live at, at Bloomer. We lived at Bloomer then. And uh, he showed up at the house every now and then just to visit. And we'd usually have dinner with him. And uh, that was how we got started when I was 15. And we dated off for four years before we finally got married. My stepfather had this box full of trains and all kinds of uh, jiggly goodies uh, that are related to trains and Johnny was just drooling over it and uh, My stepfather said well John. I'll let you have them if you'll paint uh, Lucille's uh, mother's portrait So Johnny said it's a deal. So he took the box of uh, train pieces back with us when we came back to Fort Smith and he painted the portrait of um, my grandmother. <laughs> and uh, then he, he uh, finally found other people around here who were 
model railroaders and they helped him get his started. I was driving the blue van on the right and um, our daughter and son-in-law are driving the little white uh, Mazda on the left and you can see my son-in-law's uh, bicycle on the back end of the uh, little white Mazda and we were heading to uh, the craft fair in uh, Prairie Grove and we got there and Doug took off on his bicycle. He was a bicycle uh, nut. He loved that bicycle. And my daughter and me and Johnny went all over the grounds of uh, the Battlefield Park where they hold that. He would travel to different cities where the, he had been told to come to uh, for the next discussions on the ADA. He went to Berkeley, California. He went to Washington, D.C., Denver, Colorado, uh, Wash let's see, New York. They got the ADA together, and a short time later, uh, he, we were going to different parks for picnics. We would, we would get up at oh, five o'clock in the morning and uh, load everything up and make breakfast up at a, a park. And he found that the tables weren't very good because if two people are in wheelchairs, one sits on one end of the table and the other sits on the other end of the table. You can't sit side by side. So he drew up some plans and sent them to the Arkansas State Parks and uh, suggested they make these changes in order to uh, comply with uh, the ADA law. Well, one of my favorites is uh, the umbrella uh, that will be in the show this, this January. Uh, because uh, it shows the umbrella and the little table where we had many cookouts. And uh, there's a magnolia tree there with an, and there's green leaves in, on the snow. And, and uh, it just brings back so many memories. That's one of my favorites. Well, I just want Fort Smith to know that he loved this city and um, the people here. And he had more friends, I think, than I've ever known of any one person calling friends. He was very easygoing and he loved people. <laughs>